Jason, what is your interpretation of gate gate para gate para some gate bodies fa? Okay, this can be translated. I've heard different translations, by the way. <laughs> um, gone, gone, gone beyond to the other shore. That's a very interesting way to end the Heart Sutra. Because if you look at the first part of the Heart Sutra, it talks about form is emptiness, emptiness is form, right? This is the realm of thinking, understanding. So if you study philosophy, Buddhist philosophy, uh, Buddhist scholars will often use this kind of style of teaching. Later, the sutra said that there's no form and no emptiness. In fact, no eyes, no ears, no tongue, no body, no mind, right? So that's pointing to the realm before thinking. So sometimes we might call it nirvana or emptiness or before thinking mind, uh, the absolute mind. There's many different names for this point, but those are just names. Even saying it is a mistake because it's actually before thinking. And then later it starts talking about, um, here, let's, let's open it up. And then it's talking about that the Bodhisattva depends on Praja Paramita. So we're talking about wisdom uh, in the three worlds. All Buddhas depend on this wisdom and attain Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi, which can, we can say truth. So when we return to no eyes, no ears, no tongue, no body, no mind. That means everything is crystal clear. I always give the analogy of a mirror because a mirror doesn't have anything in it. It just reflects everything as it is. Usually the mirror is clouded. Form is emptiness, emptiness is form. I am here, you are there. I like this, I don't like that, right? That's the opposite's world. So it clearly talks about this in the sutra. But then if we um, take another step, we experience this mind before thinking. And then from there, Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi appears by itself. Everything is complete. Everything is the truth, just as it is in this moment. So, and then the end, I'm seeing some different translations. The Dalai Lama says, go, go, go beyond. Yeah. So that, that means that take another step from truth. Look at the Buddha's life, right? It's very interesting, especially his experience of enlightenment, because when he experienced this no form, no emptiness, the mind before thinking, this nirvana, he did not want to get up. But he was encouraged to get up and start teaching. And for 49 years, he taught. He used name and form to help this world. So that's another way of saying going across the shore. So it's always about taking another step. So you're, if you find yourself thinking about, oh, everything's coming, everything's going, everything has form, stays for some time, then disappears. That's just thinking about Buddhism. Then you may practice meditation and have an experience before name and form. No form, no emptiness. Take another step. Go, go, go. Go beyond to the other shore. What's interesting about the other shore is that shore is right here. <laughs> Usually we're at a different shore because it's the shore in our mind. So you're not going somewhere. You're waking up right now in this moment. Take another step. Once you perceive the truth of this world, we respond with wisdom, love, and compassion. And the bodhisattvas depend on this, this prajna paramita. Wisdom is not just an idea. It's when our mind connects with the rest of the world and we respond accordingly to what is appearing. So that's my interpretation of it.